Good morning, and welcome to worship on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Um, you might have heard uh, the flute playing in the background. Um, that is uh, member Heather Firehelm, and we're thankful that she um, dropped by today to help uh, enrich our worship with her additional um, instrumental talent. So thank you, Heather, and we're glad that you could be here. Um, there are no flowers today um, adorning our sanctuary. Um, that's not a problem, but uh, just to let you know that um, all of August is pretty much available for flowers. So if you have a special occasion that you want to remember and um, have shared with the community, um, we uh, welcome anyone who wants to provide uh, flowers going forward through the rest of the month. And you can call the office um, to make the arrangements for that. Um, <laughs> arrangements, haha, no pun intended. Flower arrangements. It's a little hard to have that joke <laughs> and then have like an empty sanctuary. The puppets are not laughing at me. Okay. Um, so one other important announcement. Um, we have every year an annual meeting that is supposed to happen in May. It's been postponed um, due, with, due to all the complications and restrictions and necessary safety um, requirements for gathering together in that sort of group. We have, um, I have been in communication with some other pastors who have managed to have their meetings outdoors, their annual meeting and to be able to meet that constitutional requirement of our congregation. So uh, next, not next week, but the week after, so two weeks from now, August 16th on Sunday, we have made plans to gather at the Cherry Hill Park Pavilion. Um, we'll have limited seat seating marked off and physically distanced in the pavilion, but also please um, bring your own uh, chairs as well. And we will have an abbreviated um, service with no singing or music, um, no bulletins, no offering, no communion. So all the things that um, require touching and passing and, and close contact uh, will not be happening. But we will be able to hear the word of God together, to pray together, and then hold our annual meeting immediately afterwards. The business of that meeting will be to elect new council members and hear uh, the annual reports of the, con of the uh, congregation. So um, that may be subject to change. As we know, things change day to day. And um, if we did decide that that may not be um, the best or safest route, uh, please stay tuned. But at this point, the plans are underway for that worship service and that meeting together. Um, so that. Uh, invite you to take a deep breath along with me in and out breathing in the Holy Spirit and preparing our hearts for worship we begin with the confession blessed be the Holy Trinity one God whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you welcome us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. In the radical abundance of God's mercy, we have peace through Christ Jesus, by whom we receive grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
praise and thanksgiving is our first time. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to join me together as we pray the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Isaiah, chapter 55. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For God has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And our second lesson is from Romans chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the, the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God, blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, and I'll tell you what this is, this is the death, about the death of John the Baptist, to put it in context. All right, let me start again. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and Jesus had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to the disciples, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring the loaves and fish here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides the women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus said, you give them something to eat. I think it's Gloria Day. We've done a lot of that through our other's first ministry. And we've had a long time participation in the downtown Saturday and Sunday evening meal programs, hosting families for Family Promise, and our regular commitment of giving to ELCA World Hunger. And it shows that as a community of faith, we have taken seriously those words from Jesus, you give them something to eat. It's a very, one of the very visible ways that we've always been part of God's call to feed the hungry is our little grocery cart. It collects items for the Lynn Community Food Bank, usually out near the front door, right in the entry by the coat closet. And that little grocery cart, well, it usually was hardly ever empty. When we hold that little grocery cart up to the statistic that 54 million people in the U.S. have in food insecurity, 
And let me make this note. I looked up the difference. The pre-COVID number was 37 million. So not quite double, but getting there. So with that number and this little grocery cart, well, that could look like five loaves and two fishes trying to feed over 5,000 people. But we know. We know, we've seen it, that by God's grace, those cereal boxes, those uh, mac and cheese mixes, cans of vegetables, cans of soup, they multiply and they grow. And that with God's compassion, with God's blessing, the hungry are fed by what at first glance appears not to be a whole lot of anything. And the loaves and fish that each of you offer are then multiplied by all of us as a faith community at Gloria Day. And then Gloria Day's contributions are multiplied by all the other churches, all the other individuals who give. And so it goes. The ripple effect is easy to see. It's sort of like a potluck. <laughs> now, so many of our examples start to become a little um, ineffective in this age of COVID, but just imagine a potluck, if you will, a COVID-free potluck. Everyone brings a little. Not enough that will feed the whole crowd, but yet everyone has enough to eat. Everyone is fed, and there are usually leftovers. Jesus feeds the crowd, and we feed the hungry. But I wonder if in this story from Matthew's gospel, God isn't telling us something beyond that clear command to feed the hungry. Now, we should feed the hungry for sure. And with even more people facing that food insecurity due to the pandemic, well, we might need to think of new ways that Gloria Day can find to help. But in addition to that command, what is the life-giving good news that we hear today that gives rise to us responding to go out and help feed the hungry? Well, I hear two things that are worth chewing on. First, I hear that Jesus is pretty worn out. And he's gotten the news that John the Baptist has been killed. And he wants to retreat. He wants to grieve. And no doubt, he does see the writing on the wall for himself. I mean, if John can be killed for his message, will Jesus' own death be that much farther behind? But when Jesus sees that the crowd has tracked him down, that it's followed him, he has compassion for them. And he comes back to them, even in his weariness. And he heals the sick. Jesus has plenty on his mind, but even in the midst of that, his compassion takes over. His love for the people draws him back to them. So now imagine yourself lost in that big crowd. It's probably not too hard to do feeling alone, carrying burdens it seems only you are bearing, desperate for some help, desperate for some hope. And Jesus sees you. I mean, he sees everyone. And he loves you. And to Jesus, you are worth it. You're worth his coming back to shore. To Jesus, you are worth laying hands on and healing. Now, in a crowd, we can look around and we can think, oh, what are my concerns? What are my problems compared to that person over there? And we can minimize ourselves in comparison to what seems like the bigger needs that are around us. And honestly, for us, for most of us in our community of faith, there's some truth to that. And having the awareness to keep that in perspective is a faithful thing to do. But Jesus sees everyone. 
He sees us all. And you don't fade into the background next to someone who is possibly hurting more in a different way. No, you are one on whom Jesus looks with compassion, with love. You are one to whom Jesus will bring healing. And then that healing will get you through. And if you're like me, I mean, everyday things in the midst of all that we're living through, they have the ability to wear you out in no time. I mean, there's extra steps and extra layers to so many things right now. And the news, the flood of information, staying informed on all the things, the COVID numbers, the fights for justice and equality, the economy, the decisions that our leaders are and aren't making. And then we look around at our support network, our village of folks who we usually turn through, turn to to get through with life together. And we think, well, who can I lean on that isn't just as tired or worn out as me? But in Jesus' words to the disciples, you give them something to eat. We're reminded that we don't go it alone. In God's gift of community, we are truly in this together. We can show up for one another. We can share a burden. We can ease the weariness. So that leads me to the other gift of grace that we hear in this story. I think the good news there is that what we can call nothing Jesus sees as something. The disciples are also concerned for the crowd. They have compassion just like Jesus. They're aware that the hour is late. They know the crowd is tired and hungry. So the disciples suggest to Jesus to dismiss the crowd, send them home or out to find food. The disciples see the size of the crowd. They see no other way than to send them all out on their own. Amongst themselves, the disciples have managed to only scrounge up a few loaves and fish. And they say to Jesus, we have nothing. That's an interesting choice of words. We have nothing. But clearly, they have something. They had five loaves and two fish. It is something. But Jesus hears the disciples describe there's something as nothing. And then Jesus looks at the disciples and he sees that there is enough. Not only the loaves and the fish, but those 12 people holding the loaves and the fish. And he says, you feed the people. You are enough. When we do the math, when we aren't certain, when we are just absolutely certain, rather, that we are not, are not enough for a situation, when the world and our own weariness tells us that we aren't enough or that there is never enough, Jesus says instead, something isn't nothing. You are enough. And that's part of his command to feed people, yes, but it also goes beyond that. Because it's about this whole calling to live and be part of the kingdom of heaven. Because in the kingdom of heaven, everyone finally sees that they are enough. And then as each one of us, ourselves, sees ourselves as Jesus sees us, as worthy of God's compassion, well then we begin to look out and see the world see others as worthy of God's compassion. And then as each one of us sees ourselves as enough, we begin to see others as enough. Not less than, not more than, but enough. Fully, completely enough. And that's the good news. Because then after that, that's when we get our response of feeding the hungry. That's when we see those who are hungry with compassion and we see that that little grocery cart can be enough 
for Jesus to work with when we know that we are enough for Jesus to work with. And that ordinary little shopping cart with a few cans and boxes in it, when it's lifted in Jesus' hands, when it's blessed by words of Jesus, it's enough. And what about this baptismal font here? It doesn't look like much, just a bowl of water. But a splash with that water, with Jesus' blessing, that's enough. It's enough to wash us clean from sin. It's enough to give us new life. And the loaf of bread and the cup of wine, the one that's achingly missing from the altar, did it ever really look like much at all? But a small piece of bread, a sip of wine with Jesus' blessing, that was more than enough. And we know now in our long fast from receiving it, but that little piece of bread and little sip of wine is truly a feast. And then there's this book. This book. These pages. They are enough. They're not just paper and ink, but they're a love story. They're filled with more than enough. More than enough grace upon grace to feed our hearts, inspire our energy, so that we might love as God loves us, and forgive as God forgives us, and care for others as God cares for us, and give up something of ourselves for others as God in Christ has given up God's own life, everything for us. And then there's this gathering. This gathering that is real and virtual, this gathering of faith and fellowship, and it is enough. Held together in the bonds of baptism, that physical distance cannot break or destroy. We're a collection of broken sinners that have been transformed into holy saints by Jesus' blessing. A few songs, a few prayers, a scripture that might look like a few loaves and fishes in the face of all the challenges, all the sorrows in our world, but still we know we are fed. And that will be plenty. Plenty for God to bless and to work through so that the world might be fed too. Amen. church across the world we join together in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus, as we hear your call to feed the hungry, help us also to hear the promise that you take what we call nothing and bless it to be enough and even more. Give us faith and courage to trust in you and to serve together for the sake of the world you love. Lord, in your mercy. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. 
reverse the damage we have caused your creation, and protect those in the path of tropical storms and wildfires. Lord, in your mercy. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness, that all nations will run to you, and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. We give thanks for the life and work of John Lewis. May we all continue to seek justice and equality by means of peace and nonviolence. Lord, in your mercy. You open your hand and satisfy by the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. We especially remember those who have COVID-19 and the family of those who have lost loved ones to this illness. Lord, in your mercy. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give glory a day such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This would be the point in the service where we would normally take the offering. And I just want to take this moment to, again, thank you all for your generosity, for the ways you continue to be faithful in keeping up with your gifts to God and the work of God. Um, we do still have the little grocery carts here. We do still have volunteers who are taking what is in it to the food bank. So if this week, in, my, in light of the gospel, you would like to uh, bring something by the church and place it in the cart, um, you can do so. Uh, the doors will be open in the morning. Um, and you'll be able to bring a donation by. Or you can leave it out in the entryway. We're also taking um, school supplies for our um, offering to Lutheran World Relief that we will ship out in the fall. I invite you now then to join me in the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Closing him, praise the one who breaks the darkness.
in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.